The teenage brain is amazing and powerful because of how much we can do with it. Being a teenager can be a downright nuisance at times because of all the inconveniences that we have to bear. From the physical changes, the hormonal imbalances, and the impulsive decisions, it isn't surprising that we look at our lessons with a frown. Parents describe teenagers as impulsive, irrational, unpredictable, reckless, forgetful. These are all the negative thoughts that we get lessons with. And this viewpoint on adolescence is anything but new. Socrates once said, our youth now love luxury. They have bad manners, contempt for authority. They show disrespect for their elders. They contradict and chatter before a company. This is what the great philosopher thought of us as teenagers. And doesn't this sound similar to what adults say about us today? Some think of adolescence as a minefield where nothing good can happen and that they just have to overcome before getting to the gold mine that is adulthood. And it's even quite amusing that adolescence can be considered the ugly duckling phase. <laughs> I don't think we look like ugly ducklings, do we? And because of all this, we are accustomed to seeing adolescents as an uncomfortable and awkward and frustrating phase of life. However, we're unaware of the remarkable effects that our way of life as adolescents can have on our future as adults. We see it as such an inconvenience, even though we aren't even aware about most of the brain development that occurs at adolescence. And even if we do, we just think of it as a problem that we have to deal with. Now, the problem is this. Because we are clouded with this perception, it is hard to accept that adolescence is in fact like a huge trampoline ready to bounce you up as high as you want, but only if you try. Every single one of us in this room has a brain so versatile and so amazing that if you don't take advantage of all the amazing opportunities that adolescence has to offer, you're missing out on amazing opportunities. I'm here to tell you one thing, that being a teenager gives you power. But if you continue looking at adolescence in a negative light, you will never be able to use it. By understanding and taking advantage of the changes that occur at adolescence, you can maximize the potential of your adolescence and use it to shape your future the way you want. It is common knowledge today that there's a huge surge in brain development between the ages of zero and three. However, there's another similar surge that occurs at adolescence and doesn't end until around 25 years of age. This is why adolescence in itself is so crucial time for brain development. One of the aspects of brain development that occurs at adolescence, in your brain, you have 100 billion neurons that send messages to each other along synapses and control almost everything that you do. As you go from all throughout your childhood, your brain keeps on adding more and more connections for all the skills that you learn. It can be an instrument you learn to play or a language you learn to speak. As you go through adolescence, well, most of your childhood, your brain keeps on adding these connections. The more you perform an activity, the stronger the, the connections between the neurons become. Now, the work of important neuroscientists, such as Jay Gied, have told us that at adole ad adolescence, your brain refines these connections and prunes all the connections that are being used while keeping those that are. We generally consider pruning as bad because we forget the skills that we stop practicing, and as our brain rewires, we can feel disoriented. It can be really stressful, suddenly finding that you can no longer do once you used to be able to. However, pruning can actually be good because it's the perfect chance 
for you to get rid of the skills that you don't need. Choose what skills you want as an adult. Giel compares pruning to the process of making a sculpture, such as Michelangelo's David. Just as Michelangelo sculpted away all the unnecessary parts of marble to create the masterpiece, your brain prunes away all the connections that you don't need to, in order to make your neuronal connections faster, more efficient, and more organized. Because this is an ongoing process, it is, adolescence is the optimal time to learn something new. And in this way, adolescence becomes a unique window of time given to you to prepare your mind the way you want it for the future. Look at the case of Cameron Mott, a girl who had to get half of her brain removed because of a medical condition. Of course, she had to go through intensive therapy after, but because she was young, her brain could rewire and restore some of the functions that she had lost into other parts of her brain. Now, the reason I'm telling you is this. Your brain is malleable. The younger you are, the easier it is to change your brain, and with pruning, you can choose what changes you want to happen. So when, when, you, get, when you get to adopt, learning new skills and changing your brain is much harder. It is also easier right now to recall skills that you learned before and that you want to keep for the future. What's amazing is that there's really no limit to how much you can retain. So as long as you uh, engage in that activity during adolescence, you will retain that connection in your brain. Another aspect that affects teenage behavior is the underdeveloped prefrontal cortex. Researchers such as Dr. Deborah Jurgland Todd, uh, a, a recognized leader in brain research, have taught us that the prefrontal cortex is different for us. If you cannot put your hand on your forehead like this, right beneath is your prefrontal cortex. Your prefrontal cortex is what truly distinguishes you from other animals. It contains all your higher level cognitive thinking skills, such as planning, decision making, inhibiting bad behaviors, thinking about the consequences of your decisions. Now, because at adolescence, your brain develops from the back to the front, your prefrontal cortex is one of the last areas to develop. Have you ever blurted out something and then looked back the minute after and wondered how you could have said something so dumb? Well, <laughs> you, can brain your, you can blame your prefrontal cortex for that. Because of this, we sometimes act impulsively and without considering the consequences of our actions. We find it harder to control bad behavior because our prefrontal cortex is so underdeveloped. And this is what makes us vulnerable to things such as substance abuse. Bad habits which start at adolescence are much harder to drop at adulthood because as your cortex develops, it has already made that habit a part of it and it becomes embedded in you. But because the brain isn't fully formed yet, this can be an advantage. This is the time when you can manipulate your brain the most and choose what it considers normal. Just as bad habits start to now are harder to drop, good habits that you start now will stick much longer into your adulthood. Now, because it's easier to create good habits that you want in the future, your underdeveloped prefrontal cortex can be your advantage. Because it is underdeveloped, you have some control over how it is shaped, and this is your chance. If you want to make a habit, for example, of waking up early, or organized, or working out every day, you can create those habits now, so that as your prefrontal cortex develops, it habits a part of your brain, and you can keep them for the rest of your life. Whereas the prefrontal cortex isn't at its full potential, the amygdala is working too much. We tend to have an overactive amygdala. If you can all put your hand behind your ear, your amygdala is a small part of your brain in this region where your impulses, your emotions, and your instincts are clouded. Dr. Jurgen and Todd, among others, have found that we as adolescents use our amygdala much more than our prefrontal cortex when compared to adults. This is why we seem dramatic and our actions sometimes extreme because the amygdala as a reference point for decision-making produces overly emotional and irrational results. 
this is why we seem dramatic. And this is why the amygdala heard our, our behavior and can affect us. Because stress and emotions cloud our rational thinking, we become impulsive and irrational. However, having an overactive amygdala that is powered with emotion can be an advantage. For example, you can channel that emotion into something that you're passionate about, such as service. And sometimes we need impulsive action. Look at the case of this 18 year old. In New Zealand, an 18 year old was told by a passerby that there was a driver hanging off a cliff. Without thinking twice, without even putting on his shoes, he ran out of his house as fast as he could to save the driver. And he did. Now, the thing is, if he wasn't impulsive, the driver would have probably fallen to his death. And so what I'm saying to you here is that I, I'm not saying that if you see someone hanging off a cliff, then you should stop. All I'm saying is that being impulsive and thinking quickly without, without overthinking is, can actually be useful for you. Lastly, these aren't the only negatives that can become positives. We also have sensitive and large pleasure centers. Thanks to, we know this thanks to experts such as Lauren Steinberg, a professor of psychology at Temple University. When you get something that you like, your brain releases a biological reward that tells your brain that that activity was good. Your brain releases dopamine and serotonin. And then what it basically says is, I like this and I want more of it. The difference for teenagers is that rewards stimulate our brains much more. Research shows that given the same reward, teens are much more excited. And this is why we seek risks, we seek thrill-seeking experiences, because it's, it just stimulates our pleasure center much more. This is why we often see ourselves being reckless and taking bizarre risks just so that we feel good. But having a sensitive and large pleasure center doesn't have to make emotional sensitivity that leads to poor decisions. It can also make you more confident and faking and challenging. There's also a way you can manipulate the reward system to bits. If you want to work out every morning, for example, if you reward yourself every time you do it, your brain will encode that activity as good and you will be more motivated to do it again next time. We usually see the pleasure center as a satanic force that lures us into undesirable habits. But as long as we think like this, we won't be able to take advantage of it. People usually talk about the pleasure center and substance abuse, or the pleasure center and reckless behavior. But there are other things that activate our pleasure center. My favorite is chocolate. But hugs, encouragement, talk, and crying victory when you do something good will make your brain like good again. For example, going for a jog with a bunch of friends at 5 a.m. may be more satisfying and more pleasing than a solitary jog, and you will thus be more than willing to do it again. Now, the reason you should use these ideas in your life is that we're taking all these parts of our adolescence that frustrate us and that everyone complains about, and we are changing them into strengths. This is the perfect solution to all the problems that we face as teenagers because we're changing our limitations into our strengths. We can be in control. Just don't use these mental processes as excuses to continue propagating the same idea of adolescence which shouldn't even exist. Now that you know why you act the way you do, we can turn the tables on adolescence. It is simply your mentality that needs to change for you to be able to harness the power of the teenage brain. You can either look at it in two ways. You can appreciate it and use your time effectively, or you can dread it and just, just wait until it's over. The, the outlook is yours. The teenage brain is a work in progress, which means that you can choose how you want to finish it. What I want to leave you with is this. Adolescence is an amazing time because of all the contributions it makes 
in shaping your, your adult life. It is thus important to understand the true potential of life as an adolescent. Most look at adolescence as a nuisance and as an ugly, awkward phase of life that we just can't wait to be over with. Even as children, we can't wait to grow up and be adults. Because of this mentality, looking at adolescence as a mere inconvenience, we don't take advantage of one of the most of one of the scientifically proven most optimal periods for growth and development of your brain. Adolescence is a time when you can exceed your limits and do great things and choose what your brain considers normal. Because of all these mental factors, adolescence is such an integral foundational period that you can use to take advantage of in shaping your future and harnessing the true power of the teenage brain.